Today we've got another Back to Basics video, this one on diodes. Now I'm calling this video a practical guide to diodes from ideal to real. And rather than talk about the semiconductor physics of diodes or anything like that or in-depth applications of diodes, I just want to give you some good practical advice of how to think about diodes so when you're looking at a circuit you can figure out what's going on with that diode in that circuit. Now I've done many videos in the past on diodes, particular diode types or circuit applications and things like that. And I'll mention many of those as we go through today's video. And of course I'll include links to any of the videos that we mentioned in the video description down below. First let's consider an ideal diode, which of course doesn't exist, but it's helpful to just understand the overall behavior of most diodes as an ideal diode. You can think of that as a one-way check valve. In the forward direction, uh, the diode looks essentially like a short circuit. No resistance. It allows current to flow freely uh, from one end to the other. In this case, say from a, a voltage source to a load. You can think of it as essentially the diode not even being there and just having a wire connecting things up. And in the reverse direction, an ideal diode looks like an open circuit. It's as if you literally cut the wire and you don't have a connection at all between your voltage source and your load. Now, of course, ideal diodes don't exist, but oftentimes it's very helpful just to look at the behavior of a diode in many circuits in this ideal sense. Here's my very simple circuit to demonstrate this ideal diode behavior. I've got a 9-volt uh, power supply that's being routed through this ammeter and being connecting up here. We'll go through this little 1N914 diode into an incandescent bulb. I've just surrounded it with some black paper so we can see when it's lit up, and then that's returning back uh, to the negative side of the power supply. When I turn the power supply on, we can see the bulb light up and uh, about 55 milliamps of current flow. If we turn the diode around, we'll pull it out and flip it back in to the circuit. Now it's in the reverse direction and no current flow and the bulb is out. Turn it back to the forward direction again. And the bulb is lit back up. So that's your basic ideal diode behavior. Blocks current in one direction and lets it flow in the other. Now since ideal diodes don't exist, let's start to get a little more real in thinking about diode characteristics and consider the forward voltage drop. When a diode is forward biased, uh, there's a voltage drop developed across the anode and cathode of the diode and that voltage is typically denoted in the data sheets as VF or the forward voltage. So if the circuit is not providing a diode voltage that uh, gets up to VF, the diode will still look like an open circuit and no current will flow. Once the voltage reaches VF, then the diode conducts and allows current to flow and it behaves just like our ideal diode except that there's now this extra voltage drop in the circuit. Now this very simple approximation to a real diode behavior is really uh, very very handy and, and many many circuits can be analyzed by simply using this very simple model of the diode. I've now added a voltmeter to measure the voltage across the diode as well as the ammeter to measure the current through it. Now as I slowly turn my power supply up here I've gotten to a half a volt uh, across the diode, but still no current flow. I've got to increase the voltage a little bit more to the point where now I'm starting to get current flow here, and I'm sitting at about uh, 700 millivolts, 750 millivolts across that diode to get current flow. So now we've reached that VF, and current is now allowed to flow. Again, this very simple model of a constant voltage drop that needs to be met before current flows can be used to uh, analyze many, many circuits involving diodes. Now, even though this very simple model of a constant forward voltage can be used to analyze many, many circuits, let's get a little more real. Now, the reality is that under forward bias, the diode voltage increases slightly as the forward current to the diode increases. So the IV uh, characteristic looks a bit like this. For reverse voltage and small forward voltage, you have no current flow, once you reach VF, then you start getting current flow that is now proportional to the amount of voltage. And you have essentially this slope line, which is essentially a small resistance value. You have a change in voltage and a change in current. 
we can call that the dynamic resistance of the diode. So now the diode looks like a constant voltage in series with this dynamic resistance or small signal or incremental resistance. And this small incremental resistance is often just a few or maybe several ohms. It'll vary depending on the particular diode that we're talking about. We can see this characteristic pretty easily looking at it on the curve tracer. I've got a similar 1N914 mounted in the fixture here and as we turn the voltage up we can see that for negative voltages we're not getting any conduction. For small forward voltages we're not getting any conduction either. And as we increase uh, the voltage here we can then see the forward voltage conducting. But this line is not vertical, right? It's got a slight slope to it. And that slope tells us what that incremental resistance is or dynamic resistance of the diode. We can observe that same effect on our little test board here by noting that uh, here we've got the diode turned on and there's our forward current. As I turn the voltage up we can see the current going up a whole lot more rapidly than we're seeing on the diode voltage. So we've got a very small incremental resistance in the diode compared to essentially the filament resistance of our little bulb. So let's get a little more real about actual diode uh, voltage and current behavior. So here's a more accurate IV curve for a typical diode. You'll notice that uh, rather than having that hockey stick type shape where we have no current flow until we reach VF and then go up at a constant rate, the reality is, is that this is a curve shape and it really is an exponential shape. Uh, so we do actually start getting some current flow even as soon as we get slightly positive, but it's typically very, very small. I've exaggerated that here in this plot to kind of see that you actually do have this curve. So what that also means is that this dynamic resistance or the diode resistance is not constant. Uh, it typically is a much higher resistance, shallower slope, if you will, and gets up to very, very steep or smaller resistance as you get higher and higher in current typically. You'll reach a point where it gets pretty linear, but uh, down at the lower currents it's not linear at all. Now another reality besides uh, you know, starting to conduct you know, as soon as the dial voltage gets you know, slightly positive is that you do get some negative current flow and it's typically called reverse leakage current. And this could be down in the microamps or even nanoamps, very very small values for some diodes and it could be a little bit higher in other diodes. And as you reverse bias a diode sufficiently, you might reach a point where it actually breaks down and then you start getting current flow in the other direction. So this is a more typical IV characteristic of diodes. Now all of these characteristics, typically you know, with a forward voltage value, to some extent the dynamic resistance, the amount of reverse leakage current, the behavior of reverse breakdown, are all temperature dependent as well. Here are a couple more diode realities. Uh, the, the diode junction, the PN junction, has some capacitance, and that capacitance is bias dependent. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, also, the diode junction stores charge, and not on all diode types, but on most. What that means is that if you have a forward bias diode and then you quickly reverse bias it, you'll get some reverse current flow until that char stored charge is removed. It'll, you'll get that flow kind of briefly. And that's called the reverse recovery. And there's actually a video on that, video number 201. Again, see the links down below. Now, all of the characteristics we've talked about so far are very typical of uh, you know, PN junction diodes, typically rectifier diodes and switching diodes, the things that you run across all the time, even LEDs. But the reality is there's many, many different types of diodes. Some of them are kind of strange. Again, we've, we've talked mainly about rectifier and general purpose diodes, and that's kind of what its symbol looks like. Switching diodes also have the same symbol, all kind of work the same way. Now I talk about using diodes as switches in video number 82. Uh, most people think of diodes as simply as rectifiers or, or things like that, but switching applications are very interesting. So I might want to check out video number 82. Schottky diodes are a little bit different. They're actually not quite a PN junction, also called hot carrier diodes. And they're characterized by having a much lower forward voltage, uh, and also have very little charge storage. So they're often used in power applications and switching applications and also in RF applications where you need to switch back and forth very quickly. Now Zener or avalanche diodes, uh, these were covered extensively in video number 289, are diodes where you're intentionally using them in that reverse breakdown situation. 
uh, that situation right here uh, in the diode curve. So I cover those uh, types of diodes pretty extensively in 289. Now there's also a diode called a pin diode, or a positive intrinsic negative diode. And I actually have three videos that talk about pin diodes. Uh, video 118, 200, and 130. And they're often usable uh, for uh, RF switching applications and things like that, but check out those videos to learn more about pin diodes. The Raptor diodes are often called Vericap diodes, often have a symbol that looks like this, where the cathode is drawn to look like a capacitor. And these diodes are specifically designed to have a very predictable and wide-ranging junction capacitance variation as a function of reverse bias, kind of exploiting this characteristic here. And you might want to check out video number 147 to learn more about these diodes, often used in electronic uh, tuning applications for RF by making electronically tunable tuned circuits and things like that because now you've got a voltage variable capacitor. Of course, a Varactor diode is one example where we're not really ever forward biasing the diode. We're just varying the reverse bias to change the diode capacitance. Now, of course, there are optical diodes such as light emitting diodes or laser diodes or even vertical cavity surface emitting lasers or VIXELs. Uh, the symbol is typically looks like a regular diode with uh, some arrows coming off it to indicate that they're illuminating. Now the forward voltage of light emitting diodes, lasers, and VIXELs and things like that is typically much higher than a typical PN junction silicon diode. And you might be looking at uh, 2 or 2.5 volts for some ordinary red LEDs, maybe as much as 3, 3.5 volts or even more for higher power, you know, blue or white or, or multicolor LEDs. So again, consult the data sheet to understand the proper uh, uh, forward current and the expected forward voltage for those particular optical diodes. Now, of course there are also photodiodes and avalanche photodiodes or APDs that are designed to be used as optical detectors and they can typically be used in a photoconductive mode where the light uh, being received by the diode or illuminating the diode changes the photo current or it can also be used in a photovoltaic mode where the impinging light creates a, a, a diode voltage uh, that uh, latter characteristic is typically fairly nonlinear uh, with in, in input power versus uh, the photoconductive mode, which is a pretty linear square law device where your photo current is uh, pretty directly proportional to uh, the incident power. The tunnel diodes are uh, kind of unique. They've got a kind of a unique symbol here. Actually, I've seen two different symbols for tunnel diodes. Uh, and uh, it's got a video on tunnel diodes number 204. And they're kind of unique because they're bistable, meaning the IV characteristic has a little bit of a negative resistance to it. In fact, uh, I've got an asterisk next to this because their IV characteristic of tunnel diodes is very different from all the other diodes we've been talking about. Uh, step recovery diodes or snap diodes. These diodes have got a very, very abrupt and fast reverse uh, characteristic when you go from forward bias to reverse. So fast, in fact, that they are used oftentimes in frequency multipliers and comb generators and RF applications. There's another diode called a gun diode, which is uh, very similar to uh, some of these other nonlinear diodes, like the tunnel diode, uh, has some RF applications there as well. And there's many, many other esoteric versions of diodes that are used in specialized applications. A couple more videos where I've got uh, diodes and applications and talk about their operation are videos number 302, 183, 104, 77, 161, and 167. So be sure to go check all those links out uh, down below. And finally, let's talk about a couple of common diode specifications. And these might be specs that you might need to check uh, when you're designing a diode into an application or looking for a replacement. Typically, the forward voltage, or VF, of the diode uh, it's going to vary depending on the diode type. For silicon PN junction diodes, it's typically 0 0.7, you know, 0 0.6 to 0.7 volts, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little bit less. Of course, that's going to be at some specific forward operating current or rated current because there is this slope here. So depending on what current you pick, that's going to determine what that forward voltage is. But this uh, forward voltage will be rated at some particular forward current. For diodes made of germanium, uh, typically that forward voltage is closer to about 0.3 volts. 
and for Schottky diodes could be as low as 0.2 volts. But germanium and Schottky's are actually pretty similar, you know, just a couple of hundred millivolts of forward voltage compared to regular PN junction diodes, which are a little bit more. Now, IR, or reverse current, or often called reverse leakage current, for most diodes is going to be typically be in the single digit microamp region, okay? Uh, there will be some diodes which will be much less. They could be in, you know, nanoamps or even picoamps, depending on the diode type. Typically, the germanium and Schottky diodes are a little bit worse than the PN junction diodes in terms of reverse leakage current. Now, the reverse breakdown voltage, or VBR, and that's the voltage where the reverse current starts to increase very, very rapidly. And oftentimes, you don't want to go there, with the exception of Zener diodes, which are specifically designed to have a breakdown or knee at a designed voltage. So they're typically designed for that. Again, video 289 talks about that. Uh, oftentimes, diodes that are not designed to be broken down and used in this region will be rated with something called a PIV, or peak inverse voltage. That's typically a spec for power diodes, which really uh, specifies the maximum reverse operating voltage how much voltage that will block in normal applications like rectifier applications. We'll often see a spec sometimes for TRR, which stands for the reverse recovery time. Again, video 201 talks about this. And this is the duration of the reverse current flow when switching off. When you're going from turning on to turning off, you might say, well, the current should be zero. But as I mentioned in the previous uh, slide there, uh, there is some stored charge in the junction. So as you go from positive to negative, the, that stored charge has to be removed, and it gets removed in the form of current flowing, and that's called the reverse current. So the amount of time it takes for that current to exit out of the junction and the junction to turn off is called the reverse uh, recovery time. And this can range from you know, less than a nanosecond for some of the very fast diodes to many microseconds or even more. Schottky diodes and switching diodes are specifically designed to be very fast and have a very small reverse recovery time. But diodes such as power rectifiers, uh, pin diodes, and things like that are typically very slow, and they have a lot of stored charge, so the reverse recovery can actually be quite long. Well, I hope this uh, very short uh, practical guide to diodes has given you a little bit better understanding of the IV characteristics of a diode, and why the IV characteristics of something like a you know, 1N914 switching diode here might be different from something like... Uh, this uh, Schottky diode here, which has a much lower sh uh, forward voltage. Again, I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And be sure to check out all of the links that I put down to previous videos in the notes down below. And of course, if you're a subscriber, if you click on the little bell that appears right down here in the video uh, description page, you can get notified each time I post a new video. Thanks again as always for watching, and we'll see you next time.